Hey, read the recipe. <laughs> the amount of salt in the dish is make or break. It's the most important seasoning. The right amount of salt brings out all the flavors around it. It's the hype man of Flavortown. Too much and it steals the show, in a bad way. I'm not just talking basics. I'm talking pre-basics. Welcome to Cooking 99. In this video, I'll be talking about how to take one main ingredient, like squash, chicken, or asparagus, and turn it into a dish by itself, because you can make some delicious food without using a whole bunch of ingredients and techniques. Sometimes all you need is good old salt and pepper, and olive oil, and maybe a lemon, but you get it. Nothing fancy. I'm also going to gab about salt for a bit. One of my favorite cookbooks and one that I will encourage you to get. Uh, maybe I should have that cookbook right now. I don't know how to introduce this. Now I just have it. One of my favorite cookbooks, and one that I will encourage you to get, is called Where Cooking Begins by Carla Lolly Music. The first 20% of the book is about how to cook one main ingredient well. Sound familiar? And the rest of the book is more complex recipes. The most compelling part of that section, called salt and pepper cooking, is what I'd like to focus on here. To go into a little bit more detail, but not enough that I could get sued for copyright infringement. Carla teaches you to season the ingredient with salt and pepper, perhaps some olive oil, cook it using one straightforward technique such as sauteing or steaming, and then squeeze some lemon juice over it. Honestly, I've made some of my most memorable dishes that way. It's brilliant because it's so easy and yet everything you do serves to unlock the flavor already inside the ingredient. Let's, I can ditch this. Salt and pepper are a staple in every kitchen for good reason. The first being that it's natural to crave salt. Sodium, which is a part of salt, is an essential part of our diet as it helps regulate our body's fluid balance. We also instinctively crave salt because it's a signal of protein in nature. You can't overdo it though. And one of the great things about cooking your own food is that you have more control over the amount of salt in your diet. I can do this. Pepper on the other hand. Pepper, on the other hand, doesn't serve such a vital role for our bodies. The reason pepper is so common is because of how perfectly it pairs with salt because of its two flavor profiles. The first one, the more obvious one, is spice. Depending on how much pepper you use, your dish can have the slightest hint of spice or it can get pretty darn spicy. The second flavor profile is less obvious. Of course it's less obvious if the first one is more obvious. The second flavor profile is sweetness. When you combine salt and pepper, your seasoning now includes saltiness, sweetness, and spiciness, and you can come away with a dish that is well-balanced and very tasty. Add olive oil for some savoriness and lemon for some acid, and you've hit all five major taste profiles that your tongue can sense. That's pretty good for just a few inexpensive ingredients. I don't want to get too complicated here. I <laughs> this is hard to say without sounding condescending. I don't want to get too complicated here, but one interesting thing about salt is that it affects your dish differently depending on when you add it. Salt sucks up moisture, and that fact can be applied in some interesting ways. For example, salt can be used to dry out the outside of a meat to make it easier to brown while you're cooking it. It can also be used to reduce the water content in a tomato or eggplant to make it less watery and more tomatoey or eggplanty. In both cases, the ingredient will become more tender in the process because of science. The other thing that happens when salting earlier on is that the salt infiltrates the ingredient, flavoring it throughout instead of just on the outside. That makes it possible to achieve the same flavor while using less salt in your dish because of other slash more science. One tricky thing to look out for is that not all salts are the same. Generally speaking, different salts have different saltiness levels and take different amounts of time to absorb into your dish. Too much salt is hard to come back from, so use it sparingly in the beginning and add more at the end if you need to. Write that down. I don't care if you don't have a piece of paper, tattoo it on your wrist. Oversalting is hard to fix. Try to use the exact kind of salt specified in the recipe, and if you don't have it, look up a conversion chart. For example, if a recipe calls for kosher salt and you use the same amount of table salt instead, your food will be way saltier than you want it to be. 
and that's nasty. By the way, if a recipe just says salt, it's pretty safe to assume that it means table salt. In general, look up a conversion if you need to, take it slowly on the salt, and rely on your sense of taste. If you want to know more about salt and you're ready to get into the nitty gritty, and believe me, there's a nitty gritty, I recommend a book that you might have heard of called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat by Samin Nosrat. Now, I don't normally recommend that book to beginners, but it's definitely worth reading at some point. It's awesome. There's also a short Netflix series based on that book. It's four episodes. I highly recommend it. Tasty ways. I mean, takeaways. As per usual, there are three takeaways from this video. One, sometimes salt and pepper is all you need. It's pretty powerful stuff. Two, different salts taste differently. Table salt is typically the saltiest. And three, take it slowly with the salt when you cook. Add it a little bit at a time as you go. It's better to undersalt than oversalt because you can always add more at the table. All right, bye. Read the recipe, bye. The second, the second, <laughs> interesting thing, interesting thing. Short Netflix, ha, ho, ho, come on. Thanks for sticking around. I don't need you to subscribe or smash that like button, but I do wanna answer any questions you have, so please stick them in the comments section. We'll respond to as many as we can. We also plan on doing a Q&A at some point, so if a question gets brought up enough, we'll also stick the answer in that video. Please comment away.